Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baseballogy, where we look at the current Hall of Famers and discuss their worthiness of induction. As always, I don't advocate for anyone's removal from the Hall of Fame, but I do like talking about the histories of these players as well as how to rank them. And for today's player, I got nothing. I'm being totally serious here, I, I don't know what to say for today's player. He's a fine player, don't get me wrong, but there's just nothing remarkable about him. No real interesting story to his career, nothing that defines him as a noteworthy player, no big news story surrounding him. He's just so ordinary. I guess we'll just get straight into it. Boston's Harry Hooper. Hooper was a solid hitter in his career, which spanned from 1909 to 1925 for both the Red and White Sox. He put up a slash line of 281, 368, 387, which was good for a WRC Plus of 116. Hooper collected over 2,400 hits in his career, with 389 doubles, 160 triples, and 75 home runs. He spent most of his career as a leadoff hitter, and being on one of the most successful teams of the 1910s, he was able to put up many runs with over 1,400 of them. Hooper was an okay base runner as well, stealing nearly 400 bases in his career, despite being worth about negative two runs as a base runner. Additionally, he was a very good defensive outfielder, being worth 77 runs in the field, and had a reputation as a strong fielder as well. The problem is, as I'm sure you're aware of by now, that to be a good candidate for the Hall of Fame, a player needs to do something great. Balanced players like Hooper don't do one thing well enough to be considered strong candidates, despite having few deficiencies in their careers. A good comparison to make today for Hooper is Harmon Killebrew. Yes, I know the eras were completely different, just follow me for a minute here. Killebrew had one great defining skill, hitting home runs. He was so legendary at that ability that only four players had more than him upon his retirement. The rest of his game was just okay, having a very good on-base percentage, collecting over 2,000 hits and 1,500 RBIs, but there were some gaps in his game, like his 256 batting average and his 19 steals. But his resume is Hall of Fame worthy due to being so good at that one trait that few could match him. The same thing goes for defenders like Brooks Robinson and Luis Aparicio. Hooper was overall very solid, somewhat valuable, but he didn't do anything great at a time when the game had several great players, including his teammate Tris Speaker. So he doesn't really stand out and therefore doesn't have a strong case for induction. I really don't have much more to say than that. Thanks for watching today's video on Harry Hooper. I know that it was short, but there just isn't a ton to talk about with him. Unless you think I missed something, just let me know in the comments below if I did. Also, please click the like and subscribe buttons to get updates on the next video. Tomorrow's video is going to be about another catcher and possibly the worst base runner in the Hall of Fame. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time.